dramatization. After a car wreck, you may have to fight with a highly trained insurance company rep whose job is to knock your damaged claim down and out. It's a bad idea to enter the ring alone against a trained boxer, and it could be a bad idea to fight against a big insurance company by yourself. When the bell rings, attorney Dennis Sperling will be there to fight for your rights. If you've been seriously injured in a car wreck, call me, attorney Dennis Sperling, at 866-529-2444. That's 866-529-2444. Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Dennis Sperling, and I am back again to have a very interesting discussion. They're not the thugs. The real thugs, they're kind of quiet. The ones that act tough like that, they baby, they mama raised them. Uh, they probably still live at home with their mama. Some of them still pee in the bed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that jail time they did, that wasn't for a felony, uh, a hard crime. That was because they didn't pay their child support and they got traffic tickets. And they just went to jail. So, look, and, and here's the thing. A lot of these fake thugs are being exposed. You guys are not that tough. You know, and when I get a guy like these multimillionaire guys and you guys are basketball players, football players too. You running around here talking tough. You got tattoos all up your neck. You know, man, you you just you just making all black men look bad. You're making it bad for all of us. Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. She gonna try to hit it. You see what I'm saying? And he's yeah. making up to six, over six figures a year. She's going to work it. You see what I'm saying? If he had just contacted me about a month or two earlier, we could have set it up. But she already had that, that plan in place. I don't think they understand, Mr. Palmer, that they underestimate the the, the, the cunning of these women. They confuse the beauty and and the uh, guilt. Trip. They think they, they, they what, what's wrong with him, man? Why can't well, I? Here's the thing. The worst thing that 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 we as men ever did was un you know underestimate them. You cannot un even a baby mama tears. You can't underestimate them because they got exit plans years in advance. Yeah. And and when it comes to going to court, just like I, I heard you say, no mercy, no pity. You cannot put your feelings in the midst of that. Well, that's my baby mama, and we got years. And that's my son's mama. No, nah, no mercy, no pity. Like I said yesterday, if she on life support. You take, you take your child and file for emergency custody. My name is Dennis Fro. If you've been involved in an accident, call me and I'll fight for you. I'm not an actor or a celebrity spokesperson. I'm a real trial lawyer and I'll appear before real judges and real juries on behalf of people with serious injuries. So when I say I'll fight for you, I mean it and I'll back it up. If you've been hurt in an automobile or 18-wheeler accident, contact me toll free at 866-529- Two four four four, and I'll fight for your rights. Without further ado, here's the thing: Dr. Umar Johnson is a, is a brilliant man, and has finally come to, and, and he, like many of us, have finally come to the conclusion that most black men who have separated from the black community have figured out that uh, it is black. What, what, what they figured out is that it's the treatment that they receive. Uh, while they were under the authority of the black community the trigger and cause for them to want to move. The problem is he has hope that the conflict can be resolved. I don't. I will tell you why. First of all, black boys don't like their black moms. And it's not that they don't love their moms. You can love someone and not like their behavior. I don't have any doubt that you black men love your mom. I know you love your mom. You just don't like some of the things you saw um, growing up and that's why you don't like your mom. You love her, but you don't like her. That's 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 pretty much uh, that's a quagmire to many brothers in. The lovely ladies are not following the lead of black men. They're following the lead of the dominant society, a society that seeks to destroy black men and black women and the black family, uh, which is the cornerstone of black society. And that's why we are where we are. Black Manosphere has taken steps forward. Uh, we are we are not only setting a precedent for what should be the relationship discussions between Black folks, but uh, but now we're in a situation where you know the gate is wide open, and you got gatekeepers who are trying to keep this thing under wraps. Because see, what happens if 
the political gatekeepers can no longer sway the uh, black population to do what they want to do, then they become relevant. They're no longer useful. They get eliminated. You know, they they get go home, they get a free bus ride back to the house and party's over. And so, you know, it's incumbent upon them to make sure that uh, black folks still remain beholden to one party group or another. Now, was the least of the bad. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the 91, the eight, the 87 to 81 to 79 and the 77 that 81 is the one that said one rock gets you five years in a federal penitentiary and don't forget one of the adjuncts to that was they ended federal probation and parole for adults and what mm -hmm. happens is that if you get a five-year sentence that's 60 months and you wind up being in federal custody under their control for 56 to 58 of those 60 months they need to do something to keep these constituencies active supporters. We get nothing. We're just in this habit of plantation mentality. That's our team, so we have to vote that way. So are you saying, go, go, so is Judge Brown saying that some black people or all black people or enough black people should begin to vote for the mean old nasty Republican Party? Well, here, here's what I'm saying. Here's how it yeah. works. Uh, Every yeah. now and then, if you aren't getting anything, even if mm -hmm. you have to hold your nose, vote for the opposition because right. it can't get any worse than it is now. Yeah. So vote for the opposition. So the people that have been counting on you go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got to share. bring them back. And I the share your side says, Wow. Look what we got. We need to give them something to bring more of them over. And what you need to do is become independent. Right and vote issues and candidates, not parties. You know, Judge, I, I share your opinion that Joe Biden is a racist and, and it's because of his history of voting. Now, a lot of people say, well, Trump's a racist. I say, well, yeah, he might be, but Joe Biden ain't no better. You So I'm gonna vote for the person who, who, who has my interest in heart and not because, and I'm not just totally aligned with one party or another. I think, is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. I will scream and I will holler. Then I'll scream and holler some more, saying absolutely nothing. You have a choice in legal representation. And in making that choice, do you want an attorney with a made-for-TV nickname to represent you and your serious car wreck claim? I will growl, kick, and scream. My name is Dennis Sperling. If you've been involved in a motor vehicle accident, contact me toll free at 866-529-2444. The choice is yours. Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Hi, my name is Dennis Berlin. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you've been hurt in a car accident, then call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know I'm right. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in a car accident, call my daddy or turn in Dennis Berlin. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Berlin. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me, 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daughter, daddy. Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, mm -hmm. then make sure you contribute to the cash app. Make Terrorists sure that I negotiate with right here. Make sure you donate to you the super chat. It's only you. you. Only and your contribution. I use this thing going. Thanks. Them, you know, when I was a lot younger and I had a lot more tolerance, but what you'll find is that the older that you get, the less tolerance that you have. The more success that you experience, 
the less tolerance that you will have for women and their foolishness. And women will test you. They will try you. They will see how far they can go. And some of them, if, if you don't let them go far enough, they'll move on and go find somebody that will. But at least if you maintain your ground, they're not taking any part of you with them. In other words, you stood your ground, they left, fine. No harm, no foul. You see what I mean? There's another, there's a, I promise you, there are more women that will respect you and find you attractive if you're willing to stand your ground and stay in your place. And you're going to be there no matter what they do. They'll respect that more. And once you have respect, all that gamesmanship and macking and all that shit, man, it goes out the window. And here's another thing. I don't believe in hitting on 10 women in a goddamn club. When I was out there doing that, you know, hanging out, I would find the one woman that I wanted to talk to, and that would be it. And I put all my efforts into that woman. But what I'm not going to do, gracias, y'all. Got my coffee here. Gracias. You, you go too. You get out of here. You get go, go play with Yanni. So, um, you know, I would find the one woman that I was interested in talking to, and I put all my efforts in her. But what I wouldn't be doing is just running around there like a chicken with his head cut off, trying to talk to every woman available. That just, first of all, it's a waste of time and energy, and it, it makes you look cheap, and it should make you feel cheap. You know, you gotta talk to 10 women just to get one. I mean, all those women are gonna be attractive. You know, find the best one in there, go talk to that one. And if there's none in there that are, that are comparable, don't talk to any more. You know, and, and that's part of just being man to make a decision. I'm okay with going home by myself. I'm okay with being by myself. I don't need women like that. I don't need anybody like that. And that's the attitude that you have. One of the main lessons about being a man is learning how to be alone. Learning how to be fine on your own. You got yourself, you got God, you got your thoughts, you got your projects, you got your plans. See those things through. Women are a waste of time. They are a distraction. Now, that doesn't mean they're always a waste of time. That, that means that they are a distraction and they're designed to take you away from the things that would normally stress you out in your building. Whatever it is you're supposed to be building. You can't build anything if you constantly laid up with your woman. Hell, you won't get out of bed till 9.30 or 10 o'clock because she laid up with you. You know how that goes. You might have plans to go work out and exercise and run and all that stuff. And your girl comes spend the night. Y'all in the bed, it's 2.30. You done ate four bags of popcorn, ordered Uber Eats. <laughs> Watch three rerun episodes of some old Western movies or something, man. That's what women are supposed to do, and that's a good thing. That's what women are, they do their job. But what you do, fellas, is you allow that woman to become kryptonite to you. You allow her to become your cocaine, or your marijuana, or, or your drug of choice. You know, she's your gambling habit. When you spend all your time focused on that, man, I don't do it. I spend my time building, I, I spend my time making the things that I think about in my mind come to fruition. Whether it's building a law firm, building an import-export empire, deciding where I want to retire, where I want to live, planning that out, making sure my boys are strong and good, hardworking, uh, uh, and ready for this, this world that they're going to face. This is what I do with my spare time. I don't spend my time chasing women. I don't spend my time chasing uh, uh, this fantasy, this, this soulmate. I spend my time making my visions come to fruition. In other words, I spend my time chasing my success. You see, a dream is nothing more than a vision that you have while you're asleep. You see, a vision is something you think of and it can happen for you. So, you know, put women in their place. A lot of you men, y'all put these women front and center. That's your main problem. A woman shouldn't occupy, occupy that much of your time, man. I mean, she really shouldn't. A lot of y'all men, Like the idea that you have courses on how to get women, that's just, that in itself is simple. As they say, you, you put too much effort, you put, when a woman is, if you here and you facing forward, and between your success is a woman, then she's interfering with it. Your woman needs, the woman needs to be back here. That's something that comes secondary after the success. But we've been told, oh, you need to get a girlfriend and all that, and you can only be a, 
You get a soulmate and soulmate can help build you. All that, that's bullshit, man. You build yourself. God builds you. Your visions, your mind builds your success. You use this, your hands and your mind and your heart and your soul and your courage to build what it is that you want to see in your life so you can leave your mark on this world. You don't need a woman for that. As a matter of fact, it's counterproductive. A woman comes along after you've built yourself up. You see what level you're on, and then you go get a woman to say, yeah, okay, I like that. I like his, I like his, what he's built. I, I can, I match that. That's how that works. Anything else is just putting the cart before the horse, boys. That's what I'm saying, man. But I'm gonna enjoy my coffee and my Sunday. And uh, I hope you all find this message uh, that's meant in love. And I, I, I mean it because a lot of young men, all colors, all white, black, Hispanic, Asian, all these young men living in the United States, you raise in a society that, 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 that just, just demoralizes boys for typical male behavior. They, it tells men there's something wrong with you, innately wrong with you. They treat you like you're, uh, you know, girls with penises. They don't understand you. I understand what you're going through. You know, I'm old, and most of you fellas, I'm old enough to be your daddy, and I'm old enough to understand the guys who this message is relevant to. I might have grew up right up under you, but I know what you had to go through too, and that's why I can relate. I'm in that perfect age. That mid-40s age, I'm in that perfect age. I know what the young boys are dealing with, and I know what the older fellas had to deal with. And so that's why I can relate, and I come from a place of love. I want to see you do well, you know, and I'm not some broke, struggling dude trying to give advice to people. I've been good for about 19 summers now, for almost 20 years, and I didn't do it by selling dope. I didn't do it by running up and down somebody's uh, field or court, shooting balls and catching balls and... I did it with my own mind, my own hands, my own ambition. Nobody gave me anything, not even a scholarship, and here I am. And so I hope that I can share with you a bit of my wisdom so that you can have what I have and hopefully better. Do better than me and not have the hang-ups that I have, the, 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 the issues that I had having to deal with, not knowing, oh my God, should I get in a relationship? Should, is it time for me to get married? Do I want to have all those impulses that we have to deal with as men because we're getting so many mixed signals from society as opposed to somebody saying, you know what, son? Don't even think about getting married till you get about 35 or 40 years old after you have established yourself and you have wealth set aside, you have, you're on a track record to making money and you decide that you want to have kids and you find a woman that's suitable for you. And that is only going to happen when you see what your options are. After you have built yourself up to the point where your options are vastly different than they were 20, 30 years ago when you were a young boy, 15, 16, 17, 18, coming right out your mama and your daddy's house. See, nobody is telling you young men that, but I'm giving you a specific set of directives. Do not, do not get in a serious relationship until you've built yourself up until you know who you are as a man, until you're old enough to deal with the foolishness and the distractions that women are gonna bring to your life, and until you have the time to set aside to deal with that, and, and along with the children that come with it. And that's gonna take a long time. So you're gonna have to be a strong man willing to stand up on your square and, and, and say no to this woman, and, and be a fair arbiter. You're gonna have to be able to provide for this woman so you don't have to hear all that bull crap that other men have to hear. Cause see, when you go on 50-50 with a woman, bro, your your vote, your your vote is canceled out by hers. When she has to, when you equal partners with her, eventually that's gonna play out. Cause see, if she's equal partners with you, then she's gonna innately feel she's better than you. Because women like men who are on higher uh, planes than they are. They want to date a man who's up higher levels than they are, who's higher than them socially and, and financially. They don't want to date a man that's equal, y'all. That's, 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 a, that's a match made in hell right there. Y'all ain't, ain't going to be doing nothing but fussing at each other. You got a, she got a CNA and, 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 and you work for some corporation and HR. Y'all just gonna be arguing with each other at home all the time. But if you're an older man with hundreds of thousands of dollars and 
and, and, and you have a home and you have nice cars and you have a track record and there's not too much a young girl can say to you because you can always tell her to hit the fence. Baby, go on, get on out of here. And you can let her know that from the beginning. This is how it's gonna be. If you want, if you don't want to play by these rules, baby, you're gonna have to get off this field because there's some other people I want to bring on. Other people I'm gonna bring off the bench. You see, and you can say that with authority when you're a man who's who's built themselves up. You built yourself up to that point, but you can't speak with that type of authority. I'm sweating because I'm drinking this hot coffee <laughs> and it's it is a hot day down here. But uh, you, what I was saying was you can't speak with that level of authority if uh, you know you you're a young fella. You know, as a young fella, man, you shouldn't even be thinking about getting married. You should be, oh my God, man, you should be partying and having a good time and socializing with your friends. And man, you, you should be, uh, you should be traveling around the world. You should be educating yourself, building your career. You can have little relationships, but nothing serious. And when I mean serious, don't move in with a woman. Don't even let them call them your, your girlfriend. You know, no, I'm not your boyfriend, baby. We just friends. Don't let any of that, because you don't you don't want any of that. And don't lead them on either. Look, sweetie, if you want a man that's going to sweep you off the feet, I'm not that guy right now. I'm working on building myself up, okay? I don't have the time or money, but I'm sure there's a guy out there for you. You want to hang out, you want to party, you can do that. That's what I wish I had been saying back when I was young. Then that way I'd have been less distracted about trying to get a girlfriend. I could have, I could have been had this. You see what I mean? I could have had this at 32. You see what I mean? Not 44 and 45. That's what I'm telling y'all. And so, you know, everything is available to you but time. You can always get the money back. This education is always going to be there for you. But you don't get your time back that you wasted. And I'm sure I wasted about 12 years in business. I'll tell y'all how that story goes another time relationships, getting married, baby mamas, I promise y'all. So, um, you know, I, I wasted about 12 years and I wish I had that 12 years back, but that's okay. That that 12 years, that those heartaches, I'm telling you guys about it so you don't waste that time, okay? You need to stay focused, figure out what it is you're good at. Figure out what it is you're gonna do to make money. Figure out what your goals are going to be. And then you go with it. And you proceed in that order. And then that doesn't mean you totally ignore other opportunities that present themselves. But what that does mean is that a little fella wants to. Yeah, come on over here. Come on, little bad cat. This little bad little cat right here, man. Come on over here. Blue. Here you go, Blue. Huh. Here, Blue. Blue is bad as hell. Blue, blue is a bad little orange cat. Look at him. Look at that little rascal. But anyway, so you guys, man, y'all just, um, it's hard out there for men right now. And, and, and the only people that's going to show any sympathy uh, is, is uh, <laughs> shit, maybe other men who understand. And um, I don't have a problem. And brother said black women uh, will waste their time. Man, all women will waste your time, man. Real talk, all of them will, man. If you let them, I think black women are good at it. <laughs> the sisters are good at doing that. But, uh, you know, all women are. White women will waste your time. Latin women will waste your time. If you let them, then you got to be a man. You got to, like I said, you got to stand up on your square, man. And you got to stand firm and say, no, nah, you're not going to waste my time. But I'm not going to let you waste my time. I'm not going to let you... Uh, let me, I'm not going to move into your house, play stepdaddy to your children, help you get all the furniture in your house just for you to kick me out when your baby daddy is about to get out of jail. I'm not going to let you waste my time. I'm not going to let you, uh, <laughs> let me pay your car note every month all the way up until the last payment is due and then you put, then you put me out because you no longer need me. I'm not going to let you waste my time. Fellas, I'm not gonna let you waste my time by helping you raise your kids. And when the kids get old enough to take care of themselves, then you tell me, oh, this, this marriage is over, it didn't work out. I'm not going to let you waste my time, brothers. 
That's, that's how you need to talk to these women. You don't let them waste your time because you don't set yourself up in a situation to have your time wasted like that. Because you can spend a whole lot of years spending time and resources on and, and helping other people resolve their problems. And you never got, and you, when you could have been using that money and that time and that energy and that resources, those resources, building yourself up and building your empire. That's one goddamn thing about Dennis Sperling. I don't waste time on other people's issues. You got a problem? Hell, you can't, I got people that came, you can't even borrow money from me. I'm not going to give you a dime. Why? Because that's your problem. You created that problem. When you solve that problem, then you'll have that problem solved forever. Because if I, as long as I'm giving you money and helping you with that, you're going to be looking for me or somebody else like me to bail you out of that problem, and you are never going to learn how to resolve that particular problem in your life. See, nobody ever loaned me money. Nobody ever loaned me money. And so because of that, I don't borrow people's money because I realize that I got to stay hustling. I got to keep making money, and I got to always be able to take care of myself, even if it means I got to sell shit that I probably uh, wanted to keep because I needed the extra money, I promise you. If you, uh, I'm not gonna beat your crutch. You know, so people who be asking me for money, don't even do it, I'm not giving you any money. I'm not loaning you money. I'm gonna barely give you some time unless I'm gonna get paid for it. In other words, if you got a legal question, yeah, I might talk to you for a minute, but if it's not related to a car accident, I'm not gonna deal with it because I can't get paid like that and I got limited time on this earth. There's a lot of things I can, I can replace. Time is not one of them. And so you fellas get in, the, get in the business of not letting people waste your time. You should get paid for your time. You should be compensated for your time. Don't even let women waste their time. If you find you in a situation with a woman and she's wasting your time, man, using you for your resources, you got to recognize that and get out of it. Real talk. But again, boys, don't, don't let women, man, uh, use you, man. Don't, don't do that, man. Don't, don't do that because you're going to end up feeling bad. You're going to be resentful. You're going to be angry. Just instead, man, live your life, fellas. Live your life. There's no time limit. You, you, we so driven by these female-dominated timelines about what life should be and what, what expectations should be. Women need to be married by 30, not you dudes. You dudes don't need to be married by 30. Why? you just still a baby at 30. You're still a baby. You don't even get to be a grown-ass man till you're about 35. You don't even know shit until you turn 40. I promise you, you still young as hell. I got women now telling me, oh, you so young. I'm, I'm like, damn, I'm fucking 45. You tell me I'm young? If I was 18 and, and you told me that when I'm 45, women would be telling me I'm young, I'd be like, are you serious? Because that's just how it is. Fellas, your prime age, your prime ages are between 35 and 55. That means, it's just like a woman's prime age, we're gonna say between 15 and 35, your prime ages, your 20 years, your best 20 years are gonna be from 35 to 55. I'm in the middle of my prime right now. I'm having a fucking blast at life. I'm doing what I wanna do, I'm traveling, I'm enjoying myself, I'm making love to beautiful women, I'm traveling all around the world, I'm free, okay, but it didn't come easy. I had to build myself up like this. Now, you can fuck this off. You can fuck this off by doing stupid shit like having babies by a bunch of hood rat bitches that don't take care of the kids, that's going in and out of jail, got you on child support. You ain't seen a whole check in 15 years. Yeah, you, you can be that guy. You can mess that up. You can mess that up with those decisions you make early in, in life, not, not controlling your emotions. You can do that. Or you can do what I'm saying, dude. Hey, man, just chill, bro. Relax. It's greater later. But you can do that. You can run it like that. And I promise you to be greater later, man. Now, that don't mean everything's going to work out in your favor. That doesn't mean life is going to be easy. But what I'm telling you is because you're, you're setting yourself up, your base up, you're setting yourself up to, um, to be able to deal with those situations as they arise because you're going to have conflict in this world to deal with. But you're setting yourself up to be accommodate that conflict and keep pushing. You're gonna get audited. You're gonna have car accidents. Uh, a family member is gonna die, a close family member. Um, you might lose your job. A uh, business might get slow. But I promise you, if you set yourself up the, the way I'm telling you to, and you don't have all these impediments and burdens and, and shit like that holding you down, you, you 20 years old, man, and you got, you got, you got fucking two kids already. 
you 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 25 years old, man, and you got a 13 year old, and and you and you got you got a, a two other kids by two other women, and they all these bitches got you on child support, and motherfuckers is like, yeah, man, we about to go down to the DR, we going to we going to fucking Colombia, and you like, I can't even fucking get a passport, man, because these bitches got me on this child support, and I'm backed up like two or three thousand dollars, man. That, that's that's what you're looking at, man. If you fuck up. As opposed to saying, you know what? I might not be the fastest running, highest jumping dude, but you know what? I'm good at math. So I'm going to go to this JC. I'm going to do this shit for two years. And I'm going to transfer to a four-year college. I'm going to get this degree in mechanical engineering. And then I'm going to sit on that for about 10, 15 years. Stack my bread. And by the time I get like 35, 40, man, I'm going to be sitting on three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in a paid-off house. Brand new car. Being able to do what I want to do And then I'm going to make a decision as to What kind of relationship I want to get in If I want to get in a relationship When I'm 35, 40 years old You see, that's what you can decide You know, or you know what If you're a baller or something like that You know what, fuck these broads I know I want to play ball Every day after school, all I'm going to do is shoot Shoot hoops every day Every day If I'm a football player, I'm going to run track Every off season I'm going to lift weights. I'm going to run track. I'm going to be the best I can be. I'm going to give it a 120% go at it. I'm not going to get in a relationship with no girls. I'm not going to be dealing with none of that shit, man. I'm going to just focus on my career. I'm going to focus on being a ball player. If you're going to do it, go 100%. Don't let these bras distract you. Mike Tyson said he went five years without having sex at the height of his... his, his uh, his, his 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 heavyweight when he was a heavyweight at the height of his career because he recognized and the men around him recognized that women are a distraction they're a good distraction for men who've succeeded because it keeps you out of your head in other words a woman and her body and the treasures that she brings to you you know the good treatment the sweet talking and she ain't gonna do that to your ass unless you got some paper but but and, and you're successful but it's a good thing for a man who's always constantly up here. That woman distracting you from, oh shit, I gotta go to fucking, I gotta meet tomorrow and I'm gonna be arguing with Ted and Bill and uh, you know, I got <clears throat> all this stuff to deal with. A good back rub and a fucking blow job and you might just sleep well that night and <laughs> be ready for war the next day. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But, but, but it's a, a distraction for a man who has an incentive. That's a death nail, man. She just holding you back. You don't need that. And I promise you, man, the women look better later on in life. Shit, I, man, I promise you, man. All this, there's nothing magic about it. There's nothing mysterious about women, man. Nothing at all. You got the money and the power and the social status. The women are going to come. I promise. They never, they will find you. Then you give off an aura when you, when you have your shit together. I'm not talking about that fake ass. Uh, shit, that, what do they call that? That uh, hitting on women. You are horrible, little cat. You are horrible. Why you keep? He is horrible. Why do you keep biting me? Blue is horrible, man. Blue. What you want to say to the people, man? Huh? You are horrible, blue. Little cat is horrible. Anyway, like I was saying, man. When you have a certain level of, uh, I guess when you have a certain level of confidence, you just give off an aura. You give off a certain aura and women can smell it. It's, it I don't know what it is, but they can tell. Um, sometimes when I'm in the mall, I can be with my children. And uh, I see women, I see them making those uh, choosing signals as a young boy would say. Uh, you know, uh, flirtatious or being flirtatious as as uh, they used to say back in the day. I, I can see it, and, and it's not. A, I'm used to it. I ignore it at this point because unless the woman is somebody I would really want to talk to, I don't care who's throwing themselves at me because I already know what women are good for. You know, I know what a time and a place for them, and for the most part, they're distractions. Now, if I was looking for a wife then maybe I may be a little bit open for that. But at this point, I've been married before. I have sons, so that means I have a legacy in place. And I'm just stacking bread. I'm making up for that 12 years that I lost, learning these lessons that I'm learning now. So I still got time to compensate for what I made a mistake on 
But what I'm telling y'all boys is, don't even make those mistakes. Save yourself some gray hair. You see what I mean? Save yourself some gray hair. Get on out there, go straight through it, man. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm on your team, man. I 100 percent want to see you win. You see what I mean? I want, I want to see you boys do good. Ain't nothing I'd rather see than in 10, 15 years when I'm an older man. You know to have young boys hit me up, it's like, yeah, man. I, I, you know, I saw that. You know, I, I checked you out a lot, man, on Facebook, or I met you this one time at a at a meeting or a speech, and man, I really took in what you were saying, man. I was 18 at the time, and now you know, I'm 35, man, and I got a, <clears throat> you know, man, I got a villa in Ghana. Or, uh, you know, I got a real estate business down in, in South America, you know. Yo, 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 no, yo no quiero más, gracias. Yo finito, gracias. Um, el gatito, muy malo. Muy, era muy malo. But, um, you know, you know, I, I just want you all to consider that, man. Just, just kind of roll with what I'm saying, man. I'm a little passionate this morning because it's Sunday and I'm happy and I want y'all to be happy. And um, there's so much in the world to enjoy, fellas. And if you a man, if you, if you were blessed with a pair of balls, a natural grown pair of balls, man, the world is a wonderful place. The world is yours, young man. And you need to get out and enjoy it, man. Stop, stop allowing these women to dictate to you how you're supposed to live your life, man. You don't live by their timelines. You a man, you make your own goddamn timelines. You do what you want to do when you want to do it. And if a bitch says something like, oh, well, you gonna leave me? Bitch, go, bitch. You wasn't for me in the first fucking place. Shit. Man, you a man. That's what I want. That's what. That's my lesson to you all is one. Be a fucking man. And be, uh, being a man is, is knowing when to tell motherfuckers, fuck off. You know, I'm good how I am. I don't need you. I got myself. I got God. And I got that strong belief in myself that I'm gonna be all right no matter what. And then you move on, man. So look, I'm gonna let y'all kick back and enjoy this. This is me, man. This is what I'm looking at while I'm preaching to y'all. That's that's Johnny over there. That's my maid. This is what I'm looking at on a Sunday morning, man. That's what I say. I'm not talking to y'all about theories. I'm talking to y'all about based on how I'm I'm living and how I got here. And I want y'all to get here faster than I got here. I want you to live, boys. I want you boys to live. And, uh, you know, so I love you all, man. God bless y'all, man. Y'all be cool, man. I'm going to go enjoy my day and sip my coffee, man. It's the people's lawyer, Dennis Sperling, man. I'm out. And later on that day... <laughs> In the future, you would try to bring the best out of me. But, man, for the most part, man, I'm just enjoying life. And sometimes I'll share some photographs with you of my life. But it had gotten so bad on my main page, man. Like, I just decided to stop doing it, man. Stop doing it. Because I kind of felt bad. Because, like, people, that might take away from my practicing law. People might not think I'm You know? <laughs> I had a client refer to me a case is probably worth $250 million, you know, and then another one happened just like that. And so what that lets me know is you all appreciate me being real and being honest. And, um, you know, I work really hard and it took me a long time to get to the position that I'm in right now. And that is a situation where I can comfortably take care of my family. I can maintain multiple households. I can take care of my children. The most um, match you know, in the history. all these on with being an entrepreneur. Not everybody is cut like that. But that's cool, man. That's cool. It's a, it's a place for everybody. You know, it's some cause and some benefits to being able to... There's some benefits and uh, drawbacks to being a boss. And there's some benefits and drawbacks to being a person who, uh, you know, who's in, who, who, who works for somebody else. You know, that's what I find. 
You know, and I just want you guys to understand that play your position is cool, man. Just play your position. But other than that, I also want you all to have fun and enjoy life. That's the main thing, man. And I kind of give you guys a well-balanced view of my life. You see me and my children. You see me uh, at my office. You see me talking about serious topics. And, uh, you know, you see me just having fun like I am right now with these ladies. Um, and that's it, man, you know. So I'm not going to hold you up too long. But, again, to those ladies who follow my main page, if you have something negative to say about the comments that the men are making, um, that really shows how inconsiderate you are. You know, because that page is dedicated to men to let men speak. You know, it's not it's not for you ladies. You know, you guys, you ladies have all these different kinds of forums and pages and groups and things you can go to. And, you know, men don't really have much. You know, all we really have, well, we used to have things like pool halls and, um, you know, lodge meetings and stuff like that. But we don't even have that anymore because you guys have taken it over, you know? And so that's just unfortunate, man. You guys, we, we don't have anything, you know? And it's unfortunate that we... Finito? Muy bien. Yo, si, yo quiero comida. Ahora yo necesito finito este. Okay, gracias. Tu finito? Okay, un momento, un momento. That's my chef right there. He's cooking. Mira. El chef de Internacional. Hola, mi amigo. Prima, habla mi amigo. Hey, hey. I don't know what he Okay, he didn't hear me. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, I want you guys to, and, and after she says the chef is drunk. Dime, dime, ven acá. She's saying the chef. He's not cooking no more. No finito. So basically, they're telling me the chef. The chef is drunk. Yeah, dime, dime. Habla mi amigos. Say everything is good. Um, okay, tú finito. Okay, eh, dice habla finito, no necesito no más trabajo para él. Okay, no problem. Okay, un momento, un momento, yo quiero finito porque ya habla mi amigo. Okay, gracias, Meli. Ella es muy inter... Venga acá, venga acá. Me es Melissa. Ella es estudiante de UTESA, Universidad en Puerto Plata, República Dominicana. Muy interesante. I bought her a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, padre rico, padre, pobre, pobre. And she read it and then she did a prison. Habla, habla. Tú, ¿qué, tú, qué, ¿Qué tú piensas del libro? Es muy bueno. De, de, habla mi amigo. ¿Por mi qué? ¿Por qué es importante? ¿Ella habla en español? Sí, en español, amor. Okay, ¿Y habla español? Sí. Okay. Libro Robert Kiyosaki. I gotta go. They call me over here to eat. So, anyway, man, y'all have a great Sunday fun day, man. This is how I do my Sunday fun days. So, I'm gonna, I gotta go over here and join the rest of my guests. And uh, it's my lady friend's birthday. So, you know, I'm just chilling, man. But anyway, y'all be cool, man. God bless you. I love you. Have a good day. Everybody say adios, mi amigos. Adios. Okay, man. Y'all be cool, man. All right. What's up, fellas? I hope you guys enjoyed that rant. Uh, that's a blast in the past. Shout out to Volcanus. Shout out to all the members. W. Alfonso. Um, Broken Blade. Word life, word life, all the guys who contributed to the super chat, the cash app, Monica Daniels, Volcanus, again, everybody who contributed. Thank you so much. I hope you guys appreciated that. And um, there was some uh, <laughs> some honesty uh, that was really unfiltered, you know. And of course, we're going to put this, uh, <laughs> we're going to have to put this in the members only section because the haters will be out for this one, man. But if you guys enjoy that, you like these rants, you like to both get a glimpse of, of what life can be like. Um, if you like these rants, hit the number one button. Let me know you appreciate what I'm doing. 
Uh, if you if you guys think this is cool, this is I know this is a different kind of format, not so structured. It's just kind of you get an opportunity to just see me. You hopefully you see yourself in me. You know, hopefully you brothers. I mean, I give you the blueprint. I give you the roadmap. I show you how to do it every day. I get on here and tell you every day. This is something that you can attain. This sort of lifestyle is something you can attain. People will tell you, but they don't show you. You know, I, I try to show you. I give you a glimpse. You see me with my children. Um, some of you guys have, you know, seen my television shows. Some of you guys have seen me in, you know, in other aspects in, in court. Um, but, you know, this is me living a balanced life. But the main thing is, fellas, and what you should have taken from that is don't get distracted early. Don't get in such a don't get caught up with these timelines that everybody else has for you. You see what I'm saying? You don't have those timelines. Their timelines are not your timelines. You're a man. You're free. And so your life can be that. You know, you can envision that. You know, and the crazy thing is that's not a one time thing for me. Those type of pool parties and hanging out like that. Man, that's just what I did, you know, and that's especially over the last, I guess, maybe four or five years before the uh, beer virus hit. That's pretty much what I was doing. Um, now, of course, you know, I'm in a relationship with a lovely young woman and I'm, I'm reaping the benefit of some other things, you know, some family life. I like family life, but that right there, that's what y'all should be doing, fellas. You should be hanging out. You should be enjoying yourself. You should be doing your thing. So um, either way, man, uh, if you guys appreciate what I'm doing, make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal, as many of you have done already. And um, other than that, man, um, you know, it's not really a whole lot more I can do uh, other than show you guys that it's, it's, it's available to you. The life that you want to lead is available. You don't have to get it through game. You don't have to – Some, I mean, what the hell is game, right? You don't have to get it through that. Get hard work, dedication, uh, be motivated, stick to it, and you can have everything that you want to have, fellas. Just, just you know, listen to the people who are already successful, right? The people who are already successful can point you in the right direction. My man Frozen 06 said, keep extracting the simp chips, bro. Man, I'm breaking simp chips every day. Them queen, mother, goddess simp chips don't stand a chance around me, man. <laughs> I do my best, man, to get rid of all of them. And you brothers need to be liberated uh, from from the simp chips, man. And um, the main thing is just, you know, I'm showing you you free. Like, it's one thing for me to got for me to tell you guys, hey, man, you can live your life like this. It's another thing for me to say, man, yeah, it's nothing. Get you a little, you know, get you take your little time off for yourself, man, and. Uh, you know, and, and put some time, you know, put yourself first. This is what happens when you start putting yourself first. And that's what I want you guys to do. Put yourselves first. Now, um, in the meantime, I also want you guys to uh, make sure you join the uh, and shout out to Jim Jones, too. He says, um, Uncle, uh, um, don't take this lightly when I say you're a very inspirational piece. brother. thank you so much. And the other thing I want you guys to understand, I'm not your leader. I'm not trying to lead you. I'm not telling you what to do. All I'm telling you is that this is a path that you can take. This was my path. You see what I mean? And I didn't get it by being a lawyer. Or, I'm sorry. I didn't get it by being a um, a a, a uh, what's what's a ball player or drug dealer or something like that. I got the old school way. You know, I went to school for it. But if you want to join the page, because this is this is definitely going to be a members only. You got to click on that join button and you can be young and hustling, balling, rich rolling. Uh, I'm going to put this one in young and hustling. Nah, I probably better. Yeah, I'm going to put this one in young and hustling. Instead of, well, actually, I'm going to put it in there for members. I'm going to make a decision who I'm going to put it in there under. But for the most part, man, you guys, um, it's attainable. You know, hard work, dedication. And if you don't get this, if you don't get sidetracked, like I got sidetracked, then you can have it faster or more or better. You could have it all. You see what I mean? You see, this is what I'm trying to tell you fellas, man. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm talking to you guys from my own personal experiences. Now I love my children, but it's greater later. 
which means that if I had waited until I was late 30s, early 40s to have my children, I probably would still be in a relationship. I probably would be married. I would have all the things I have now. And I would know well enough to know I need a prenup and all that other stuff that I know now because I would have seen I would have seen how the world operates. But see, young people, young men, you go in it naive. You see what I'm saying? And so, fellas, all I'm saying, man, and the whole point of this is just to show and prove it's greater later. You know, um, I want you guys to just be patient. Be patient with yourselves. Stop putting so much pressure on yourselves. You can have it all. Just stop putting so much pressure on yourself because all that's going to do is cause you unnecessary stress. So uh, either way, man, if you guys appreciate what I'm doing, like I said, hit the number one button. And, um, you know, and if you want to contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal, you go right on ahead and do that. Uh, the link is in the chat room. But in the meantime, we'll take a quick little break. And we'll be right back. Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. The only time black men are allowed to speak is when it benefits others. So hey, this is your opportunity to speak. I wanna hear from you. And if you wanna make this voice louder and clearer, then what you need to do is contribute to the Cash App, the PayPal, and the Super Chat. I Thank you everybody for your contributions. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Donate to the Super Chat. Donate to the PayPal. Donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that'll cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. All right, so I'm back, man. So, yeah, I got a couple of guys. Uh, Goldie says, says, greater later. That's right. Let me see. Be patient with yourself. That's some things, man. That would be, if I could go back and talk to myself, as a young man, I would tell myself, be patient with yourself. Cause half the worrying you doing about not being able to keep up with what everybody else got and what everybody else is doing, that that word, that just gets in the way of, uh, of your progress. It, it interferes with your time. You worry about what the next people have. You gonna have what you gonna have. You see, whatever whatever is yours is yours. What's not yours is not yours. And if you get something that's not yours, it's gonna kill you. You, if you end up having something in your life that's that's not supposed to be there, it's going to drive you crazy. It's going to disturb your peace of mind and happiness. And whether it's a job, a woman, a house, a car, hell, it could be a family. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? If you with the wrong family, they're going to drive you crazy until you get away from them. And that's odd how the world works like that, man. I was talking to a philosopher, friend of mine, and uh, it was a suggestion to me that we pick and choose the life that we want to lead. What does that mean? We pick and choose who we're going to be. When our souls or when that energy that comes from God, when it's about to return, we pick and choose who our parents are going to be. We basically know our life and who our parents are going to be and what we're going to have to overcome before we get here. And so if you come from that philosophy and there's some there's some evidence in the Bible about that. If you want to we can go into that another day, but uh, there's some scriptures that support that. But if you understand that, then that means your conscious soul, your conscious mind already knew all the perils and hardship you were going to have to under, uh, undergo. The only thing is, are you going to make the right decisions? Are you going to have the, the intestinal fortitude, the wisdom, the knowledge, the patience to overcome? Or are you going to cop out? You going to, you, are you going to, are you going to cop out with alcohol? Are you going to cop out? Oh, I'm going to just take less. I'm going to just marry this little average broad and live in this little average life and do this little average thing instead of reaching for the greatness or reaching for the gifts you're supposed to have. Or are you going to, you're going to be stuck with this family that treated you bad when you were a little boy or disrespected you out of don't, uh, I'm dedicated to the family because it's my, fa even if they treated you horribly, you see what I'm saying? And so, uh, and so, so you got to understand, you got to be strong enough to sometimes you just got to walk away, man. You know, it is what it is. You just got to walk away, man. You know, and, 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 and again, if you with somebody, um, 
And you're, and I say this in my books, Rules to Live By, How to Maintain Peace of Mind and Happiness in a Conflicted World. And I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the, um, the uh, you guys probably, how in the hell do you have a chance to write three books and you was doing all that hanging out and kicking it? Well, I'm good at managing time. But if you want a copy of the books, you can get them at, at just email me at SperlingDennis at gmail.com and you can get a hard copy. Or you can hit me up uh, or you can find them on Amazon. Then the only thing on Amazon, you got to download them. But what I explained in there is a concept of peace of mind and happiness. That's why the books are rules to live by, how to maintain peace of mind and happiness in a conflicted world. What I'm basically explaining to you all is you got two different states of being. You got either peace or you have conflict. And so what I do is I teach people in the book how I resolve. Well, I explain to you the conflict I was dealing with, whether it was an emotional, spiritual, uh, physical, uh, intellectual, mental conflict, or whether uh, and, and how to assess that conflict and then resolve that conflict so you can get back to the point of peace. Now, one of the main rules is you have to separate yourself from the persons, places, things and circumstances that interfere with your peace of mind and happiness. And that also that can include a, uh, that could include your family members, which your daddy, your mama, your children. Right. Uh, it can include a job. It can include a car. It can include a job. I mean, I mean, it can it can include hell. It could be a pet. It could be a, a place where you live. Sometimes you just have to separate yourself from these things that are interfering with your peace of mind and happiness or to drive you crazy. That's my whole point. And so when I tell you something as strong as like, yeah, sometimes you got to leave that family behind. That's a lot of that's a lot of issues that a lot of you brothers are having to deal with. Y'all don't want to leave that family behind. That same family that's that's ghetto, a ratchet, a hood, uh, you know, and that family extends out to a culture that's ghetto, ratchet, hood that's tearing you down and making it impossible for you to live your life you know, and have peace of mind and happiness because the most high wants you to have peace of mind and happiness so that you can fulfill the purpose that he has for you on this earth during this life. And you can't get to that purpose if you're always fraught with conflict. You need to pick up the Lord's battle. And so in other words, you got to separate yourself from those people who would interfere with your ability to figure out what it is that God wants you to do. The Muslims say this, submit to the will of God. And what that tells me is they're basically saying, figure out what it is that God has for you to do, what his purpose is for you. And you go do it. It's the same thing I'm saying. You that's that's get yourself on the peace of mind and uh, on the road to peace of mind and happiness. You fight for that peace of mind and happiness. You walk down that road and you figure out what your purpose is. But you can't get there if you constantly being distracted by by conflict, wars, family members, you got a job, you're paying for a car you can't afford. You decide to get your girlfriend a, a new car. Now she decided to take that, that new car and, and, and ride around with her boyfriend. <laughs> Yo, yeah, right. Your girlfriend has got her boyfriend riding or driving her in the car that you're paying for. Right. That's that's conflict. That's going to disturb you emotionally or it should or you wouldn't be human. So. What I'm trying to tell you fellas is, man, just focus on your focus on yourselves. I tell you guys to put yourself first. That's why I tell you hit the number one button for everybody who's learning to put themselves first, especially you black men. Begin to put yourselves first. Hit the number one if you putting yourself first. Hit the number one button if you decided to put yourself first, fellas. That's what I want you to do. Hit the number one button. I want you guys to make it a practice of putting yourself first, putting your needs first, because not every everything stops if you're not in a place where you're mentally, physically, emotionally, financially able to 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 build and protect and be the men that God wants you to be. Nothing else works. And so, you know, black men can no longer be the sacrificial lambs. And, and think that black society is going to survive anywhere on earth. You have to put yourselves first, not a cause, not the church, not the people. Put yourself first. And for those of you guys who listen to my, my Sunday sermon, I basically kind of hinted at the fact that 
if the Bible says ye are all gods, that means you have the God in you that created you. And if the Bible says put God first, then you put yourself first because that's the God that you need to put in you. That's the God that you should be focused on focused on the one inside you put yourself first fellas but uh either way man i appreciate you guys man this has been great uh please join again i'm gonna put the link up so you guys can join the uh join the uh because this one is definitely gonna be one that goes uh straight to the uh membership files because you know uncle d got a lot of look at all that foolish that's uncle d got a lot of haters man and uh you know they don't want me giving you this message See, I'm not, I'm talking to you about becoming better men. I'm talking to you about building yourselves up and see the problem with somebody building up black men is if I build you up and I have you around here thinking you are, uh, you know, highfalutin, you might start demanding more from other people. You, you might start having some uh, standards and stop taking less of this foolishness that people have for you. And you might, matter of fact, you might start putting up some boundaries and making people have to respect you. And that is the last thing they want black men to start doing is forcing people to have to respect them. So you keep that in mind. That's why this message that I put forth, this freedom doctrine, this put yourself first culture is dangerous to the status quo, especially if black men start doing it. Because see, here's what's going to happen. If black men start putting themselves first, I promise you every other group in America, follows our trends. They're going to start putting themselves first. And now you got to uprise. You got men who say, oh, hell with that. I'm putting myself first. I'm not about to spend 30 or 40 years sacrificing myself, all my youth, sacrificing for myself for some ungrateful woman and some fat ass kids that, that don't appreciate the damn thing that I do. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that later on in life after I've enjoyed myself, built myself up, got on the path that I'm supposed to be on. Uh, that God wants me to be on. You see, that's what that's what they don't want you to do. They man wants you to do what he wants you to see. The government wants you to get that money, go get that job, get you a cute little wife of 22 years old, 25 years old, and spend the next 50 years paying her and paying for those kids and paying taxes and paying and, and, and taking them to Disney World and buying extra gas. That's what they want you to do. You see. That's what they want. So you spend your whole youth instead of doing what it is you desire to do, instead of doing what it is God wants you to do. You you basically spend your life as, as a babysitter, as an as a ATM machine for some woman and some kids that you don't even know right now. You see, and probably didn't even want at this particular time, as opposed to getting yourself together, becoming the man that God wants you to be. And then after you get to that point, Right. Then God will send you the woman that's supposed to be with you to help be a help mate to help you accomplish the things that God wants you to do. See that that's that's the power right there. man. You see, that's when you're on your right path, your blessings come. If you if you find yourself in a situation where ain't nothing but heartache and turmoil coming your way, that means you in the wrong place. That means you've placed yourself in hell. See, there's a lot of people that say, oh, hell is this place in the middle of the earth and it's hot and you can get poked with a dude with, uh, a, 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 you know, a trident, you know, and he got a tail and some horns and stuff. Hell is anywhere on earth. Ask them people who are locked down in that prison, your local prison, if they're not in hell. Hell can be a bad relationship that you stuck in and can't get out of or feel you can't get out of. You see what I'm saying? That's hell. See that? That's that's the hell right there. So you know, you some of you guys are living in hell right now, and you thinking, "Oh, I'm just gonna get out of." But see, the problem you don't realize, hell is a circle. So you just go from one layer to the to the next. You got to remove yourself from that. You got to separate yourself from the persons, places, things, and circumstances that are interfering with your peace of mind and happiness. If you find yourself always bound up and wound up in conflict, that is akin to being in hell because you're always stressed out. You can't sleep at night. You know, you can't eat. Your health is going bad. So you got to separate yourself from that family. That's what I'm asking you brothers to do. I want you guys to think about that, man. You got to begin to put yourself first, figure out what it is God wants you to do and then do it. 
And like, I know people are like, well, how can he be talking about God? He was just in the pool with about 10 women. <laughs> Cause I can't, God made women, God made swimming pools. God made the people that made them. You see me enjoying my life and having a balanced life. Tell me, tell me, uh, 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 look at all the great men in the Bible, right? They had balanced lives. You see what I mean? They enjoyed themselves and they also did God's work. It's nothing wrong. Don't let this weird, weak society that we live in, call the United States, a, a, a Western society, tell you, dictate to you what's acceptable or not. Because see, in this society, men are allowed to marry uh, uh, other dudes. You understand what I'm saying? Women are allowed to marry other women. They, they, that's okay. So this, they lost their moral high ground when they start letting anything like that happen. This is the same society that okayed slavery for, for, for hundreds of years and, and Jim Crow. So I don't accept any uh, barriers. This is the same, this is the same society that deemed it was okay to wipe out the indigenous red man who was here in the United States. So there's absolutely nothing that, that the people in this society can tell me about how I live my life. If I decide I want to go hang out and enjoy myself in the swimming pool, I'm cool. And, and the crazy thing, they were able to justify that in the same Bible that I'm referencing right now. So I, I, I don't accept that. You don't let anybody judge you. If you if you are with, if you're right with God and you're doing what God wants you to do and you read that Bible for yourself, you, you learn that doctrine for yourself, you read it for yourself and you'll read there's so many different things in there that can be helpful you know and one thing i've learned reading the bible and look at the chosen people the the the, the hebrews the, as they left israel i mean as they exited uh from uh, egypt they partied all they had got all kind of holidays they was always partying hell jesus turned water into wine what does that tell you he expected you to to have a balanced life sometimes you need a little stress relief you don't want to indulge you don't want to be a glutton you know, and I don't want to be partying and hanging out with 10 women in the swimming pool when I'm 55, 60 years old. So, of course, at some point, I'm, a, you know, relax. You see, at some point, I'm going to get into the family thing. But what I'm telling you brothers to do is do it early. Enjoy your life. See what's out there. And some of y'all might not. Some of you guys are like, I'm cool, man. That's, I know that's an option. I just want you to know what you have, what your options are, brother. That's it. I just want you to know what your options are. That's it. You have a right to enjoy this life. These women have, as a matter of fact, the, the whole feminist movement did nothing but free you and tell you you, you are free because they're strong, independent, and don't need a man. And what does that mean? That means I translate that to mean I'm free and I can do what the hell I want to do. That means I don't have to get married. I don't have to take care of your kids. I don't have to have any kids if I don't want to. And I can bounce whenever I want, whenever, whenever I want to. That's what all that did. So thank. let's salute to uh, feminism. Thank you so much, first wave, second wave, third wave, and fourth wave feminism. We appreciate you for liberating all the men in Western culture. We out, all right? And, and so, you know, that's my response to that. But look, in the meantime, you guys, as I said before, uh, if you want to join the channel, because this one is definitely going in, in the membership only, just go ahead and join it. And uh, all the members will be able to see it. If you guys can hear me, you hear what I'm saying, hit the number one button. But uh, you want to definitely join this right here because this one, this one is definitely going to go down. <laughs> all right, this is going to the membership pile. But uh, anyway, man, shout out to everybody. Shout out to all my guys. I appreciate you guys, man. Y'all been cool, man. It's always good to see you in there. Well, my man Flox is in here. I'm going to go ahead and make Flox a mod. That's my dude, Flox. Uh, from the Bay Area, Sacramento, San Francisco, up Northern California. So I'm going to add him as a mod. Uh, welcome to the uh, to the mod squad. Welcome to the ranch mob. Um, thank you so much. And I appreciate you guys. But in the meantime, man, I don't have anything else to say. I hope you guys appreciate what I'm doing here. If you do, make sure you go through my other videos. You know what I'm saying? Go through the other videos. Man, I got a lot. I got like... 300 some videos, 600 videos, man, that I did this year alone. And uh, so you guys go through that, man, and get that information, man. Come, I look forward to hearing what you guys got to say about, about this video, those members. But in the meantime, man, God bless you. I love you guys, man. And remember, it's greater later. It's Uncle D. I'm out.